If you've been paying attention to the previous videos, you've probably noticed that in some examples, water acted as a Bronsted-Lowry acid, and in other cases, it acted as a Bronsted-Lowry base. What this means is that the water molecule can act as either an acid or a base. If we have two water molecules present, one of the water molecules can donate a hydrogen ion to another water molecule. This is called the auto-ionization of water. The two products that we would get are the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion. When two water molecules are in equilibrium with one hydronium and one hydroxide, that equilibrium would lie far to the left because hydronium is a much stronger acid than water. We could write an equilibrium constant expression for this equilibrium system. We would come up with the equilibrium constant K is equal to the concentration of the hydronium ion times the concentration of the hydroxide ion. In this case, we would not have the water molecules in the denominator of the equilibrium constant expression because the water is in the liquid phase. We used to use a subscript C to indicate that we're using concentrations to determine this equilibrium constant. However, for this particular equilibrium constant, we're going to use the subscript W. This W indicates that this equilibrium constant is the ionization constant for water, or the constant related to the auto-ionization of water. At 25 degrees Celsius, Kw has a value of 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th. Again, that very, very small number indicates that this equilibrium lies far to the left. This relationship between the hydroxide ion and the hydronium ion concentration and the equilibrium constant applies to all aqueous solutions. Since the Kw applies to all aqueous solutions, if we know the hydronium ion concentration, we can calculate the hydroxide ion concentration and vice versa. Furthermore, this indicates that hydronium ion concentration is inversely related to the hydroxide ion concentration. In neutral solutions, the hydronium ion concentration is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. However, in acidic solutions, the hydronium ion concentration is greater than the hydroxide ion concentration. The inverse is true in basic solutions. In basic solutions, the hydronium ion concentration is less than the concentration of the hydroxide ion concentration. In this problem, we're asked to calculate the hydronium ion concentration in a solution that has a hydroxide ion concentration of 2.0 times 10 to the negative sixth molar. After that, we're asked to indicate if this solution is acidic basic, or neutral. To begin with, since we're given the hydroxide ion concentration and we know the value for Kw, we can use those two values to find the concentration of the hydronium ion. We rearrange the equation to get the hydronium ion concentration separate, and we get the concentration of hydronium is equal to Kw divided by the concentration of hydroxide. When we plug in our values, we get the hydronium concentration is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the minus 14th, which is the value for Kw, divided by 2.0 times 10 to the negative sixth, which is the hydroxide ion concentration. This gives us a value of 5.0 times 10 to the negative nine for the hydronium ion concentration. At this point, there are two different ways to determine if this solution is acidic, basic, or neutral. The first way to do this would be to compare the hydronium and the hydroxide ion concentrations. In this case, we see that the hydroxide ion concentration, 2 times 10 to the negative 6, is larger than the hydronium ion concentration, 5 times 10 to the minus 9. 
Since a hydroxide ion concentration is larger, that means this solution is basic. Another way we can do this is by looking at the hydronium ion concentration and comparing it to the concentration of hydronium ion in a neutral solution. Since the hydronium ion concentration of 5 times 10 to the negative 9th is less than the concentration of hydronium in a neutral solution, that means that we have less hydronium than we would in a neutral solution, so then this solution would again be basic. You may have noticed in the previous problem that the concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide were very small numbers, on the order of 10 to the minus 6 or 10 to the minus 9 molar. Chemists are people, and people often don't like working with very small numbers. So the chemists have found a way to turn these very small concentration values into more human-sized numbers that can be used to compare the acidity or the amount of hydronium ion present in a solution. They do this by something called a pH. The pH is found by taking the negative logarithm of the hydronium ion concentration in the solution. For a neutral solution with a hydronium ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, the pH can be found by taking the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 7th, which gives us a pH of 7 for a neutral solution. We should probably stop here and have a quick word about significant figures for logarithmic functions. The number of significant figures in the concentration will be equal to the number of decimal places in the pH value. Now continuing on, we see that for a neutral solution we have a pH of 7. What kinds of pH values would we have for acidic or basic solutions? For acidic solutions we have pH values that are less than 7. And for basic solutions, we have pH values that are greater than 7. We can put all these numbers on a scale known as the pH scale that would look something like this. We could even compare it to the hydronium ion concentrations in a similar scale. So you can see how the hydronium ion concentrations and the pH values align with acidic or basic solutions. Now that we have pH values, maybe you're the kind of person who likes doing things a little bit different. And you're not such a big fan of hydronium ions, but you really like hydroxide ions. If you're that kind of person, we have another different scale for you. This is called the pOH scale. In this case, the pOH is found by taking the negative logarithm of the hydroxide ion concentration. The pOH scale would look something like this when compared to the pH and the hydronium ion concentration scales. Since the hydronium ion multiplied by the hydroxide ion is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, we can do the same things with pH and pAOH values. We find that the pH plus the pOH will equal 14. In this problem, we're asked to calculate the pH and pOH for a solution with a hydroxide ion concentration of 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6th molar. There are two ways to go through this problem, depending on what your preference is. You can really say a lot about you, depending on which way you choose. The first approach is to take the given hydroxide ion concentration and to find the hydronium ion concentration based on the KW expression. In that situation, we find that the hydronium ion concentration is equal to KW divided by the hydroxide ion concentration, which is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 divided by 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6, which gives us a hydronium ion concentration of 5.3 times 10 to the negative 9th molar. The next step would be to find the pH of this solution using the hydronium ion concentration. We would set pH equal to the negative log of 5.3 times 10 to the negative 9th 
and that would give us a pH of 8.28. Now that we have the pH, we can subtract the pH from 14 to get a pOH, and we will get a value of 5.72. The second approach to solving this problem involves first calculating the pOH from the given hydroxide ion concentration. This gives us a hydroxide ion concentration of 1.9 times 10 to the negative 6th. We take the negative log of that and we get a pOH of 5.72. To find the pH of the solution, we now take 14 minus the pOH, or 14 minus 5.72, to get a pH value of 8.28, which is the same value we obtained using the other approach. Either approach will work. Just remember, it tells me something about you depending on which approach you decide to use.